Hello, everyone. Long time no see. Welcome back to our season two finale of Books and Booze, the show where Opinionated Lushes invites on indie authors to talk about their book and read a little a little bit of their book and talk about the writing process in general. Tonight, we're actually inviting on a fellow uh, VCR party found footage friend of mine, uh, Jeff O'Brien. Hi. Hey, Jeff. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's nice to meet you in person because like we're yeah. Facebook friends. Because Virtually we're... in person, you know. This is in that's person. Is a... That's as social as I get. So, <laughs> exactly. I mean, Me too. The, the four of us, we're really, we're tight right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like besties. Yeah. Best friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared I'm going to like give you guys what I have. Like that's how close we are. Is it, like... Did you have bronchitis? Yes. I I woke up January 1st. This is how I started my year. I had just lost my job. And then I like two days before Christmas. And I woke up January 1st with a fever. And I had bronchitis for three solid months. Oh. Yeah. So I, I know how you cough. feel. A yeah. hundred day cough. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. Well, it's a they, real thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. It really insane, is. Yeah. yeah. The lingering cough is no joke, too. Yeah. I can't. I need my voice. It's kind <laughs> of my entire job. <laughs> It's the worst. You can hear it when I laugh, like how I'm like almost coughing. Like I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like I still, a if I have a like a, a good hearty guffaw, like a, a belly laugh, I still have a little bit of a cough to this day. <laughs> That's just getting old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Too, yeah. Like, that, that old people lungs. Yeah, no, I get that too. If like I'm like, oh, I gotta calm down. I'm having too much fun because like I'm no longer breathing. <laughs> So, Jeff, you want to tell us about the book that you'll be reading today? Yes, I would love to. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I put it right here. While you're looking for it, I'm going to talk about the book that I own of Jeff's called Neon Nympho. Do that. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, you go. <laughs> uh, and I just want to say, like, the first two sex scenes in, like, the first two chapters of this book, um, the first one's an orgy with aliens. I'm, you know, this is just to get you in the mood. Like, I'm not spoiling it. This is just the first two. And then the second one is with the same guy that died to the aliens, but he's not quite dead yet. My favorite part was that he was almost dead, but lived long enough to give consent. I was like, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm intrigued. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to move away from the blue uh, material. I, I I did that for a long time. That's actually I started writing in 2013, 2012, and uh, I started out with like writing trauma movies in book form, and those seemed to get the most attention from the readers. But at heart, I really like. I always wanted to be uh, like a Douglas Adams or a Terry Pratchett kind of. You know, cleverly funny. Not every <laughs> not everything has to be an orgasm. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm doing more of that these days. I did just put out those two books with the Beef Blaster Band, which is largely those two guys are based on my actual band in real life. So I kind of wrote those as a joke, and uh, you know, have something extra to sell at shows. Uh, but I'm here tonight to talk about the Time Travelers B movie blog, which is. Um, a much cleaner experience. <laughs> yeah. I, I like. I'm so excited for you to like read some of this book because, like, about 20 minutes ago, I just checked out on Amazon. So, like, I'm excited to get like a peek at it before mm -hmm. it comes in on Wednesday. So, <laughs> oh, you ordered it? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Oh. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I need this book. So I just purchased it. I it should be here by Wednesday. Um, fantastic. <laughs> You're my favorite of the three now. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I've got a book, too. We should be oh, at least all right. tied. It's a tie. It's a tie. Come on, Don. <laughs> it's a tie. Yeah. Actually, <laughs> after this, I will purchase a book. Why you, not? You can borrow <laughs> theirs. I don't do this for money. I just do it for a <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> That's every indie author. I don't, yeah. I don't I do, do this, this for money. money. No. Do you want to give us the drink words before we get started? Yeah, so it's VHS. Uh, for the younger folks, that's what people used to watch movies on before you could just watch them on the internet. And then there is Hair and Sarah. 
Awesome. So um, get started whenever you're ready and we will mute and drink along. Before I I do, I just want to give like a little background to the yeah. listener or the viewer because even with that, there's probably going to still be a lot of context missing. So the book is about Frank Conroy, who is uh, a modern day schlub, a guy who's very mediocre in most ways. Uh, his hobby is he runs a B-movie blog, uh, and he's an expert on, like, VHS nostalgia. Not based on me at all, <laughs> I, I assure you. So anyways, he gets sent back in time by the elusive time traveler known as John Titer, and his mission is that he doesn't really know yet is to help a struggling B-movie starlet stay famous through the decades by giving his expert opinions on B-movies from someone who is 30 years in the future. All that being said, I'm going to read an excerpt where he finds himself in 1988 in the home of this B-movie starlet named uh, Sarah, uh, which is a drinking word. And uh, yeah, I, I guess I've, I've blabbered enough. So uh, are we ready? If whatever you are, yeah. I'm going to hit some of this tea. <laughs> Once she was gone, I looked around the room and realized just how magnificent it was. It was like a retro paradise. Framed posters of horror movies I'd never heard of adorned the walls. A massive box television sat against the wall across from me. Atop it was a VCR and a gray cable box. All around the room were massive shelves packed with hundreds, if not thousands, of VHS tapes. This girl must be a very wealthy hipster, I thought. I had not seen a VHS collection that massive and well-maintained since, probably since I owned a video store. Further separating this room from the current year was the ashtray and the pack of Marlboros on the coffee table. Who the hell smokes cigarettes indoors anymore? And who the hell has a stained glass coffee table with claw feet? I figured I might as well make myself comfortable despite not knowing how I even got wherever the hell I was or even when I was. So I reached over next to the couch and opened the mini fridge, only to find more mystery within it. Cans of Pepsi and Budweiser were stocked in there, but the cans were retro. Whoever she was, she certainly made living in the past look fashionable. I grabbed an old-fashioned can of Pepsi and patiently awaited her return. A few minutes later, she was back. It was at that point I realized that my current whereabouts were certainly not the issue so much as my whenabouts. The tip-off wasn't her clothing which were skin-tight, stonewashed jorts that were cut just below the crotch with plenty of butt cheek showing in the back and went up just under her belly button. Up top, she wore a cut-off Cinderella t-shirt, the 80s hair metal band, not the Disney character. Secondhand clothing in the clothing stores in the current year must make a killing off barista girls buying such garb, so I wasn't shocked by any of that. Her hair, though, no one takes the retro look that seriously. It was curly, all right. I didn't even know how to describe such a hairdo. Puffy and big, her outfit and her hair would have passed as hot or sexy in, say, 1988. I was always an expert on these things. It wasn't that I didn't find her beautiful. She just seemed terribly misplaced. She took a seat next to me on the couch, pulled her feet up and crossed her legs and turned sideways to face me. She lit up a cigarette and inched a little closer. Trying not to make my attraction awkward and obvious and not become entranced with her chest that was heaping out and looking like a creep, I glanced around the room and said, wow, you have a massive set of, let's get right, right down to business, Frank, she said, cutting me off. Save the pervy shit for later. Okay, I said in confusion, turning back to her. It's 1988, she said. I had a feeling that was the case, and I probably should have guessed it sooner. This, of course, only gives me more questions, since this definitely is not a dream. Your questions will be answered in time, Frank, and no, you are not in a dream. In the meantime, let's just talk about why you're here 30 years in the past. Yes, let's, I said. But first, you mind if I bum a smoke? You're a smoker, Frank? Well, I was. I quit in 2013, but since it's 1988 now, I guess it technically doesn't count. That's pretty sound logic if you ask me, she said. By all means, help yourself, dear. Now, looking around you, you can probably see that I'm a very wealthy woman. Yes, I said, and then lit myself a cigarette, saving the glorious first inhale. That's pretty clear to me. Are you a movie star? Sort of, she said. Not quite yet, but I'm going to be. Around you on the walls here are posters of the movies I've done. I was paid well for them, as you can see by my lodgings, but they have yet to see the light of day. 
Well, I guess I got paid most of that money from those other kinds of movies I did before these ones on the posters, but that's neither here nor there. I also come from a very rich family. That was a big help with me trying to get started here in Hollywood, but that's not important either. Those other movies I'm referring to may never see the light of day, and I'm perfectly okay with that. But the movies on these posters will, and I'm going to be a big star, and I'd like it to stay that way. That's why you're here, Frank. Okay, I said. And you have no idea who I am, I'm guessing. I'm afraid I don't, miss. Sorry. This is just what I feared. She sighed and looked away. I'm so glad I found you. Uh, am I supposed to be able to help you in some way? I sighed, growing further befuddled by the moment. I'm not sure what I can do. It cost me a lot of money to get you here, Frank. I certainly hope you can help. Well, why don't you start by telling me how I can do this? Telling me who you are might help, too. My real name is Sarah. Sarah Bartlett. That's two drinks. But that's not going to do you any good, perhaps. Perhaps. Perhaps what, I said. Perhaps she let out a giggle and turned her lips into a devilish grin. Perhaps I should just show you. Show me what, Sarah? I'm going to go change again. Sit here and relax for, well, when the clock on the wall over there strikes ten, I want you to get up and go down that hallway over there. The last door on the left is the door to the basement. Go down there, and I think your memory will be jogged, I hope. Otherwise, this has all been for naught. Okay, then. Feel free to turn the TV on. Sounds good, I said. Say, before you go, do you mind if I take a look at those that massive... She leaned over and kissed me on the cheek, cutting my words off. <clears throat> I was certainly puzzled by that, but was not going to complain. There'll be plenty of time for that later, honey. She jiggled her breasts in my face and then turned away for the door. I had no idea what was going on. Later, honey, like I said. She wandered out of the room and down the hallway, leaving my question to fall flat before completion yet again. Now alone... I looked for the remote control so I could kill the 10 minutes by watching some television, hoping to delight in some old 1988 commercials, or maybe be lucky enough to catch a few minutes of some long forgotten show or TV movie that had fallen into obscurity. I remembered then that it was 1988, and even though this Sarah Bartlett chick could clearly afford every conceivable luxury, it made sense that the remote control might not yet be one of them. I remembered that my parents hadn't acquired one until at least 1992, so I got up and turned on the TV the old fashioned way. I was pleased to see that Night Court was on, so I sat back down and enjoyed the antics of Honorable Harry T. Stone for a few minutes, which then segued into the classic Where's the Beef commercial. The clock struck ten faster than I hoped it would, for I found myself quite content basking in childhood memories in person as they were actually happening in real time. How often does one get to do that? With great reluctance, I got up and turned the TV off and headed down the hallway toward the last door on the left. As I opened the door and started down the stairs, I felt as if I had once again stepped into some kind of supernatural occurrence. Heavy fog filled the air, obscuring my vision. Since not much else about this day had been even remotely normal, I continued on undeterred. Once I reached the floor of the massive foggy basement, it finally dawned on me. The how and the why not so much, but the where and the who were clear as day. Directly in front of me were several heavy-duty video cameras mounted on tripods. Beyond them, through the thick clouds coming from the fog machines, was Sarah, sitting on a throne. She sported a tight and rather revealing black dress, smoking a cigarette and drinking a glass of wine. On her head was some kind of Egyptian headpiece and a black wig with straight bangs, which she looked way, way hotter in. Her face had been decorated with makeup to give her the appearance of a Hollywood Egyptian queen. Off in the corner was the gold-plated sarcophagus with the gigantic boobs. Welcome to the unknown, she said. You're Mr. Sosira. Thank God, she groaned, breaking character. The picture and the sound on the VHS I bought were so bad that I didn't even recognize you without your costume on. Not surprising, Frank. This never was a production of great quality. Anyways, I think you can help me. Help you do what exactly, I asked. For now, just help me make my Halloween special for 1988. It's been made already. I got the VHS and saw it last night. Last night for you was 30 years from now, Frank. Remember, it's March of 1988. Oh, yeah. Kind of forgot I'm like six or seven years old right now. I don't know what month it is. But the fact that you saw it is all I need to know that the special will be completed and at least make it as far as a VHS release. How so, Sarah? How much of the video did you see, Frankie, darling? Not much, actually, I said. Just the beginning and some of the first segment. Before the tape got eaten in my VCR, I just saw you get out of your coffin and then some fat, goofy asshole in a mummy costume named, hey, wait a second, his name was Frank. That's right, Frankie, she said. Oh, this is great. Oh, this is wonderful. What is? That you saw yourself in the video. I said, that actually was me in the mummy costume? Or it actually is going to be me? 
Shit, I guess the camera really does add 10 pounds. Oh, so what, you fool? I think you're adorable. But who gives a shit? The magnificence of that actually happening is evidence that this little plan might just work. Oh, I could just kiss you right now. Okay, I said. Geez, Frank, don't sound so excited. Okay, I said. Much better, Frankie. So, uh, Sarah or Mistress Osira or whatever you want to be called, about this plan, as you called it, like, why did you pick me to come back and be in your production? And furthermore, why did it cost money? And who did you pay? Was it that weirdo guy with the wraparound sunglasses who smells awful? You being cast in this production, Frank, is just an added perk for you. As far as why I chose you, well, I didn't really choose you. Let's just say I put my money together and I requested a specific service to be done by whatever means necessary. And you were the first person he brought me. And who exactly is he? The weirdo guy with the wraparound sunglasses who smells awful, she said. Just as I suspected, John Titer. What service could I possibly provide you, though? Don't worry about that right now, dear. You're here. The first step has been successfully taken. In the meantime, how'd you like to party like it's 1988? Okay, that sounds great. But first, if you don't mind, I'd really like to make a close examination of your massive, gigantic, ugh, fine, she said, cutting me off, looking irritated. You're not going to stop until I show you again, are you? I know they're great. She placed her glass of wine down on the armrest of her chair, stood up, yanked the front of her dress down, and revealed her breasts to me. I guess this is all men from the future care about, too. You can see them all you want. It's not like I haven't shown the rest of the world, or at least the few who have seen the porn I've done, or actually watched me on late-night pay channel shows, or saw advanced screens of my movies. Um, Sarah, I began, thoroughly embarrassed for the both of us. I was just going to say... I'd like to take a look at your gigantic, massive collection of VHS tapes. It's quite a novelty for a guy like me who lives in the future. There we go. Uh, that was awesome. I got a great reading. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Good words. Good words. That was good. I, I thought about being a real sadist and making one of the words I as the book <laughs> is in the first person. But uh, I didn't want to be responsible for liver disease uh, yeah. for any of you. So. Appreciated, yeah. My yeah, <laughs> we appreciate yeah, the care. I, I, Thank I don't you. feel like having cirrhosis. I'm good. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> too, too old for that. Like. It, yeah, and I, here I am, uh, a recovering alcoholic, with three three people just slamming them down in front of me. Yeah, I'm we warned you. <laughs> oh, good for you. Yeah, Don's just getting hydrated. She's she's just no. drinking water. So you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. I'm not. <laughs> Good for you. Live it up. I'm not. I'm sure it's good for the throat. Yeah, yeah. No, sure. Some natural, like, like, uh, what is it? Herbalist. This Whatever is what the doctor are. would have prescribed me like a hundred years In 1988. ago. Yeah. They're like sore throat, rum and coke, uh, but the other kind of coke, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, oh. So you said you started writing in 2013. Like, was there like a catalyst for that? Like, just uh, a, you were just like, I'm doing it. Or were you just always wanting to release a book or? Uh, well, if you look at my Amazon bio, it says I woke up on January 1st of 2013 and realized that the Mayan doomsday prophecy didn't play out. So I decided <laughs> I had a new, a new lease on life <laughs> and that I would start writing. The truth is that was actually the first time I quit drinking. And uh, so I started to like, you know, I'm, I've got to replace this uh, habit with something. I've always wanted to write. I've made a few attempts at it before, but now I have all this free time to to spend. And it just clicked. And uh, and that's uh, I spent literally all my time uh, doing that. And it was a great replacement. Oh, very great. healthy. Very yeah. healthy. Until yeah. five, that was during my first marriage. And then five years into that, I kind of started drinking again. And uh, now I'm back. Five <laughs> years clean. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. That's hard. And you wrote a whole last book. You wrote a few books like that. Yeah. Always oh, so many books. books. <laughs> For just, yeah. like, I yeah. still can't even write I, one. I, but, okay. I don't get these like legendary alcoholic writers like say Bukowski. Like that guy was <laughs> that guy was lit every night. And you know, if I'm even merely buzzed, I'm just thinking about making a fool out of myself, not sitting down and like typing words. Right, yeah. like with when like we drink once in a while, and sometimes I have too much, and my brain isn't functioning. It's like mm -hmm. go to bed, bitch. Like there's yeah. nothing else. There's nothing else being 
productively done, it's like go to bed. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I, I live stream. <laughs> <laughs> I go on. I go on Twitch, and I'm fucking drinking away, playing video games, and usually it ends because I spilt my drink because I <laughs> forgot the rules and knocked something over, you know. So yeah, writing words is definitely a, a challenge. Well, yeah, you know, S- Stephen King doing all the drugs. I'm like, how? Like, yeah, I, I, I do drugs. I just want to dance. Like, <laughs> how are you just writing words? Speaking of your Amazon uh, profile, uh, it says that you're in a band. Yes. Is that Meat. still still going on? Like yes, how it is. is. That? Yeah. Do you want to talk to us about your band a little bit? Okay. Meet. We're, uh, we're a two-piece band. Uh, I play bass, uh, heavily distorted bass and scream. And uh, my friend Ryan is the drummer. And uh, we've recorded two EPs. We haven't played any shows yet, uh, but... Those are in the near future, and uh, so if anyone's uh, looking for a wedding band, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, we have uh, songs with good wedding titles. One is uh, "Rush Limbaugh's Corpse Tastes Like Ham." <laughs> um, another is uh, "Beef Queef." Mm, I like that. Uh, I want to walk down the aisle to that. You know? So, yeah, I mean, if you got a, a, a kid's communion or. A, <laughs> Uh, birthday parties or whatever. If you can't afford a clown, we'll come. We'll we'll do it for half that price. <laughs> whatever the clown was charging, you do yeah, have. We, yeah, we will cut it right in half. <laughs> Speaking of clowns, I do want to say I love your killer clowns yeah. in the background. Yeah, uh, that's Sonya's favorite movie. Mine <laughs> so, too. Yeah, from all all time. It's just like oh, it just makes my soul feel so happy. Yes, I've <laughs> probably watched it in the vicinity of 30 times. It's just, it's a feel-good, happy place. It is, yeah. Like, it's so, it makes no sense, but in a good no. way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, who needs sense? You don't. You don't. <laughs> you, don't. <laughs> you don't get to bog everything down with, like, you know, rationality or meaning or no. even coherence. No, exactly. Just the beauty like... is, the, is chaos. Yeah. Chaos is beauty, whatever. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. So your books, they're not like they're they're different. Where gets like I'm trying to think of good words here. What what is your muse? Like what like made you think of these topics? Um you see, I'm interested in a lot of things, like super passionate. Like one of them is like the VHS era. Uh another is I mean, of course, there's a million horror novels in the world, but there aren't really any. I mean, a lot have popped up in the last 10 years or so. But, I mean, there aren't a lot of horror novels that are like a a very low-budget shot-on-video horror movie. And I always, like, my one outlet, you know, that I'm good at or good enough at is writing. And... I write what I want to read. Like I would love to read a novel about a guy who goes back in time to the eighties and meets a eighties B movie starlet and helps her career. Like I would love to read that book. So I basically, I write what I want to read. Yeah. I think that's, that's my main impetus, if you will. Yeah. yeah. The, we, we've heard, no, we've heard that from a few authors where it's just like, they started writing cause the book they wanted just wasn't, out there mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah i think it's a great time to be reading indie fiction because i mean nobody's making money i mean if you walk into barnes and noble and you look at the bestseller shelves yeah there's like 10 people on there who are millionaires a lot of those people i mean they're english teachers like they're they're working so i think that this has caused a lot of people to just write what they want instead of what other people want because if i mean if all I get out of writing financially is like a tank of gas every month, I'm going to do it for me. Yeah. You're yeah. winning. Yeah. 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 You're winning. Yeah. Like, man, yeah. you get a gas tank of gas paid for. That's it. You're, you're better than most. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I just now I, I made about a gallon from you buying my books. So thank <laughs> yeah. you. You're welcome. The, now, now you could go to every, every book sale is 
is about equal to what the sign, the price says on the sign at the gas station. So yeah, much yeah. appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> How long does it take you? Cause, cause just cause you, you've been writing for what, just over 10 years. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, you have so many books. How long does it take you on average to like finish a book to completion? <sighs> it all, it, it depends. Usually, um, every time I finish a book, I spend about two weeks hating the world because I don't know what to do next and I can't write. I can't get my brain together. And then uh, maybe about the two and a half to three week mark, something just clicks and I pound out a book in about six weeks to two months. Right. Yeah. I That's mean, so you know, they're, they're <laughs> yeah. short. So, you know, it's not like I'm like doing anything, you know, any epic tomes or anything, but, um, I usually shoot for about 150 pages, 40,000 words, you know, novella. I think 40,000 is actually the bare minimum for novel status. Mm -hmm. So I usually I shoot for like 40,000 and usually end up with about 37 or 38. Yeah, <laughs> only 40,000 words, like only. only, only. <laughs> well, it doesn't, I mean, that, that sounds like a huge number, but when you, I mean, words on a page, you know, like this time traveler is like 37,000 words. It's, you know, it's pretty thin. And the, you know, mm -hmm. the fonts are kind of, kind of big for you for an average book. So it's a big number, but it's they're, not a lot. They're readable for like older folks. You know, it's not tiny. It's good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes yeah. that's, I, I, I have actually, people have told me that they, they prefer Kindle because they can adjust the size because a lot of books are hard to read because let's face it, we're getting older and our vision is going. I'll use no, a magnifying use glass me. before I go so to I fucking Kindle. Fun of me. She sees my Kindle and like the size and she's like, what the hell? And I'm like, listen, I need it for my eyes. I'm, yeah. I'm a fan of the Kindle. Like I still, I still buy paperbacks, but I can read in the dark. You know, my wife can be fast asleep right next to me and I'm laying there with my Kindle, you know, cause you know, you, f I, if I read paperbacks, I'm on the couch in the living room. And I like to read to fall asleep. So I start falling asleep on the couch, close the book, get up. And by the time I've made it to the bed, I've tripped over the cat or <laughs> had to lift the cat out of my spot in the bed. And then I'm wide awake again. So with the Kindle, I can just put it down and, and doze off. Just pass right out. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, I, I have to have a book always, like a holdie. I don't know. I like, I get distracted reading the Kindle. Like I can't... Mm -hmm. uh, I can't stay focused. I don't know. It's weird. My brain is unable to work that way. So, like, when people are able to use the Kindle, I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous because I know it'd I'm be so great jealous. for my like bookshelves and yeah, my, my pocket book or whatever wallet. If I could do Kindle, <laughs> took a lot of getting used to for me. Yeah. Dawn's over here. She's like, oh, all my smut on my Kindle. <laughs> like, she's zooming in on like words. Like, she's like penis. Like zooming well, in. All those, <laughs> no, all, all those Bigfoot erotica books are like on Kindle Unlimited. So if you sign up for that, ten bucks a month, you can read all the Bigfoot. Uh, oh, porn. Don knows KU. Like she. <laughs> <laughs> she's so like, desperate. Honest to God, I looked. And I have over a thousand books on my Kindle now. Mm -hmm. Like well over a thousand, and I'm like, crap. I should probably clear off some memory, but I'm like, I'm, I'm going to read this eventually, right? Oh, so yeah. like, ah. yeah, it's just like the massive like shelves shelving I have full of books I haven't touched in the last ten years. I'm going to get to them someday, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. I have so many to be read, and I keep buying more books. And I was like, no, like those can wait. I need to read the books I just got. Like <laughs> they've been there for so long, they can wait. They're not it's going tough. I, I usually bounce back and forth. Like I'm usually reading three books at once, like I am right now. Yeah, and like a little insane. Rory Gilmore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get like the not that I ever watched the Gilmore like Girls. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> no one has. No one has. Not no that one. every girl I ever dated over the last 15 years made me watch the Gilmore Girls. We so. all had mommy issues. Like that's <laughs> why we watched it. Yeah. Maybe like, that's what I liked about it. <laughs> we're but like yeah. generational trauma. We're fixing that shit. Like that's why we're watching Gilmore Girls. <laughs> what uh, advice would you give someone who want to start writing? 
first would be don't take advice from a completely unsuccessful hack <laughs> like myself. Um, second would be uh, the biggest complaint I hear from people who tell me that they want to start writing is, well, I don't have the time. And I say, I say, look, I'm not trying to sound like a hard ass here, but you have to make the time. I, mm -hmm. If you stay up all night writing and you're dead exhausted at work the next day, but you can't wait to do it again and pound the coffee and stay up all night writing again just to be miserable at work again the next day, then you you, you can be a writer. But if you're just going to... I mean, it's, I mean, not that I know anything about working out, but it's like, if you're a bodybuilder, you got to do it every single day, even if you don't feel good. It's, yeah. I mean, and I, I, I don't write every day, uh, mostly just on my days off, but I carve out about six hours where I probably should be doing other things like cleaning this apartment or whatever uh, <laughs> that I neglect. You have to, you have to be neglectful. Uh, in other areas of your life to write because it's a very time consuming venture. And if you're not willing to sacrifice some things um, may might not be the path you want to take, but yeah, my, my number one advice is just make the time sacrifice a, a night's sleep. Yeah. It could result in a great book. You know, if you, if you finish writing a book and you sell it and people buy it, you're not going to be thinking, Oh boy, I wish I'd gotten a good night's sleep six months ago. <laughs> no. yeah. say, oh my god i have this book here this product that i finished it's a work of art and now i can show it to the world and now i'll sleep for a couple nights and i'll write another book and yeah. be exhausted again <laughs> you cycle. don't need to sleep, sleep yeah. when you're dead That's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who's sleeping anywhere anyone this, these days like seriously no one's sleeping no, I'm just too stressed. <laughs> Time to scroll yeah. TikTok, watch TV, play video games, read. I'm at the yeah. point now. I'll, I'll have my last cup of coffee or tea at like nine o'clock at night, and I'll be fast asleep by eleven, unable to stay awake. I'm so so I don't know. This is like I'm immune to caffeine and That's anything ADHD. else that could possibly. A D A D. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's me. You know. I can... <laughs> They tested me for that shit when I was in high school. And I guess they didn't know anything about ADHD, ADHD in the nineties <laughs> because now I look at these lists of symptoms and I'm like, I check off every box. Yep. Back then it was, there were like ADHD like there. So it's like, you had to have that hyperactivity component, especially if you were male. Yeah. And so if you just had the ADD, they were like, Oh, you don't have ADHD. You're fine. You're fine. No, you're just lazy. That that's that's, uh, that's <laughs> yeah, what teachers yeah, that's tried what to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just got diagnosed last year, like an actual diagnosis. Like I've had obviously had it my whole life, but like last year, I was like, as a grown up, I'm like, listen, I just I need some help because my brain isn't mm -hmm. doing what it should. And uh, very helpful. Lots of medication. I people should be on it. <laughs> I feel like I don't need the diagnosis, like, because I don't really want to do anything about it. Like, yeah. I've gotten yeah. it, I've made it to my 40s pretty okay. You know, I'm on medication for anxiety. So, do I need another pill? You know, whatever I'm doing, it seems to be working. I've got a roof, a wife, yeah, yeah, a, a job. I'm holding it together okay so i'll just be undiagnosed and not be able to finish reading the directions on the <laughs> shelf that i buy you, the don't, you don't need it you don't it's fine <laughs> yeah it's you literally do. like i i self-diagnose myself because i'm like i keep having disabled kids no matter who's the dad someone here is the problem <laughs> So I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's me. Um, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna take medication um because unfortunately I'm not sober. So I don't want to take medication and drink at the same time. That is my safety. So uh yeah, if, so it's, hey, if what you're doing is working. Right? That <laughs> you don't need it, you don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have written like so many books and all of your cover art is completely different and creative 
Uh, there's mm -hmm. so much detail into each one. Do you like have somebody specific that does your cover work for you? Or? Uh, a few people. Um, uh, I've written some serious horror novels and uh, I have a friend, Don Noble. He works for uh, Rooster Republic Press. They're a publisher, but they also do, you know, he does freelance cover work and uh, his, he does some great graphic design that just looks great. Because where as I've written in different genres, I like the cover to kind of tell people what they're going to get. So, like, say for example, here's here's Big Boobenstein. <laughs> this is this is a, a comedy horror novel. I think the cover tells you that. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know that's yeah. going to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Or there's uh, Moopit Pastor, which is another comedy <laughs> horror novel I wrote with. Um, it's actually a novelization of a, of one of my favorite. Uh, shot on video, micro budget horror comedies of the same title, Movie Pastor. Again, the cover, like, you know, that tells you you're going to laugh. Um, I don't write serious horror anymore because it's just depressing and who needs that? But, you know, you'll see if you see a book with like a, a grisly skull on it or something, you know, then, then you know that you're going to get um, serious. Something serious. Yeah. Um, but for these. These two, you know, I'm just sorry for all the product placement I'm doing. Here. No, no, it's no, that's fantastic. That's why you're here. That's your job. It's <laughs> these, fine. These were designed by my friend S. Edward Sloan. He actually runs a graphic design company called Hauntwares, uh, which you should check out. He makes like the cutest like horror themed T-shirts, like cute bats and cute skeletons and and stuff like that. And he's just a tremendous graphic designer. And I'm also giving money to a small business and to a friend. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, I spend, a, I definitely spend more than I make on these books, but it's okay because <laughs> I'm having fun and it's to the benefit of my artist friends. Yeah. yeah, we can no, even no, put no, a link sense. in the description to his stuff too, if he, if you, if you'd like that. We oh yeah, I'll ask him, so yeah, hauntwares.com. Pretend the link is right there. And, uh, <laughs> Oh, it's great. No, I just love how much detail is into them because like you don't really see that a lot anymore. It's like a back a black background with a swish of color or a flower. Or it's AI. Or AI. Oh, like it's I have oh, oh, don't even get me started on that shit. <laughs> I oh. I have I have lost friends over AI. I have some writer friend had some writer friends and they're just slapping AI on their covers and I'm like, this is theft. This is yeah. taking art that is copyrighted and turning it into something else. There was even one instance where an, an artist's signature worked its way into an AI book cover. So if you're messing with AI, we ain't pals. And yeah. and I, I um like with AI, like there's stealing st like when you're an artist, you're obviously always it's always derivative. You're always driving your art from something. But AI isn't human, so like they can't derive art <laughs> at all. <laughs> They're just like it's just stealing. And I do want to put this out there for all of our podcast listeners. Um, our podcast platform that we use to distribute actually has a new AI um, uh, ruling in their terms of service, where if you use any AI derivative um, uh, content in your podcast, uh, that's not allowed. So thank you, ACAST, Good. for putting that in your terms of service. Uh, we applaud you. Uh, so any mistakes, all us. All, yeah. Yeah. all yeah. human all error. Us. I mean, yeah. uh, self-publishing through Amazon, like I do, they even have a feature now where you're setting your book up. Um, you have to answer a question if, you know, it was AI used. And it says that on the book's page, like, you know, could whether it be the cover or you wrote it with chat GPT or whatever, it'll tell the potential buyer that, which I, I, you know, Amazon doesn't do a lot of good things, but kudos to them for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A disclaimer, like the bare minimum, yeah. but we're thankful. Thank you. <laughs> and, and like, I think AI personally is like a tool that can be used, but not for art. No, like, like if you're using it for spelling mistakes, um, I've seen people use it in podcast editing to get rid of their ums and like stuff like that. But you're not creating new content. No, like that's, and I feel like that's the 
the barrier there. It's like yeah, I, you, I, I run, a tool, not a creation mechanism. Yeah, I run everything. Every first draft, I run it through Grammarly because I have a terrible habit of repeating words like and and or the the and you know before it gets an edit with human eyes you know i run it through that but that's you know it's personal use yeah exactly. it's not writing exactly. the book for me exactly exactly yeah. it's like ai itself isn't inherently bad it's just the way they're trying to market it for use it's like stop stop i don't want to see a toys r us ai commercial thank you very much like that's mm -hmm. no <laughs> stop what i hate the most of ai is that it's not actual artificial intelligence can you call it something else? Like, I'm going to get a new name for it. Like, that's it. That's my, I like, that's my biggest pet peeve of it. But no, like, if it's like good for like some things, but taking other people's work to try and make it your own, uh, not okay. <laughs> and every time you let AI run rampant, it just becomes a Nazi. Like that's like that. That's why they have to put like barriers on Chat GBT and stuff. Because if it does learn anything from its interactions, it just always becomes fascist, and that's not <laughs> the way I like my machines. Unfortunately, <laughs> like, I'm just saying. <laughs> and we've learned nothing from dystopian science fiction. Oh, we learn nothing from books. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not or movies. <laughs> like we, I watch idiocracy like a thousand times i feel like it's becoming more of a realistic thing learning mm -hmm. nothing it's <laughs> now <Well>, a documentary <laughs> you know there we talking about like books and stuff like we um like the handmaid's tale I, I keep seeing people being like life is becoming the handmaid's tale and it's like have you never seen a margaret atwood interview every time she's like nothing in this book hasn't already happened it's like, so stop saying it's going to happen because it's already happened. It's yeah. already happened. That's like a realistic thing. But... It's already happened and it's only going to get worse. 100%. <laughs> Sorry yeah. about your country. I saw the debate. <laughs> I wish, I mean, I know you, you told me some other things about Canada recently. Um, all that being said, I'm still, look, I, I had no insurance. Um, I, had my, I had to have my kidney removed a couple months ago. It ended up costing about twenty five thousand oh uh, dollars. So I'm still I'm still jealous of you Canadians. <laughs> that that's that's fair. <laughs> that's insane. I like that fear of maybe tomorrow I will need emergency surgery and like I have it covered. It wouldn't cost me anything. But mm -hmm. like yeah. to have that fear, I just like I could not handle that type of stress. It was, yeah, you know, you don't think about it until it happens. But I, of all days, I woke up on April Fool's Day. Oh no! <laughs> Jokes on you. Yeah, took a piss, looked down. It was red. Oh no! Uh, Twelve hours later. Oh yeah, you have cancer in your kidney. We're taking it out. Oh, that's I was more, and for that funny thing is, I was more concerned about God. What is this going to cost? Oh my yeah, god! Like, yeah, that's that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, that that's like really I rough. like sometimes I'm like, oh man, I'm so jealous of America. They have all these different cereals, you know. But like, <laughs> there's, like, there's, like a, there's an underlying like you know bigger issue there. It's, yeah. You might have something to do with the cancer, but we, we <laughs> yeah, like all the cereal. <laughs> yeah, all the cereal. You have all the cereal, but you can't. All your you fast know. food joints. I'm like, oh, I just want to try this place, this place, and this place. Yeah, you can get all the McDonald's you want, but no insulin. So you know, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> there were, well, speaking of Canada, there there's a Tim Hortons in uh, Maine, which is about 50 miles from me. I was really disappointed. It's so um, are we? <laughs> I, I thought it was this great thing. It no. is not in America, okay? It's is not it, great it... anymore. Okay, it's bought out by an American company. So it is American owned. Now it's still different. It's still like so it's anywhere still different in America. Than the UK, yeah. There's Tim Hortons in other countries and they have like cooler shit than we even Canadians get. No, uh, yeah, that's true. America just doesn't know how to make coffee. Go to any coffee shop and the coffee is garbage. Tim I, I work is for coffee, <laughs> chocolate, uh, Americans can't make like random oh foods. God, they're not very food good. Not go to Olive Garden. Holy shit. Like, oh I my God. They're just salt. like salt. <laughs> yeah. My, my salt. mother is Italian. 
<laughs> and uh, if you bring up Olive Garden in her presence, you're you're gonna That's get an airfall. We <laughs> actually follow an Olive Garden hate account on Twitter. <laughs> Um, <laughs> they retweeted a lot of our hate stuff from Las Vegas because we had Olive Garden there. Yeah. And it was just salt. salt. It was it just literally salt. we were eating salt. We were drinking cocktails, and we're like, "Why is this salty?" <laughs> the well, bread know, was salty. I'm like, "What the hell? How do you get bread salty?" I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I went to uh, uh, back in the '90s. I went to London. And uh, the only thing I could eat over there was Burger King and KFC. And because, well, I mean, look, sorry, English people, the food sucks. <laughs> yeah, over there. yeah, yeah. But I mean, their, their Burger King and their KFC was way better than in America. I don't know what they're doing. Do you want to know there. why? Okay, this is a political thing. So I know why. Tell me. Okay. Um, their food restrictions are a lot more severe than even canada so they have very stringent rules on ingredients um and so their ingredients have to be like top tier for even their fast food in so like their mcdonald like all that stuff is like they're like using like real chicken and wow. like, <laughs> so like that's, <laughs> no, that's yeah, they're, why they're using not like actual white meat and not like ground up uh, yes. beaks. Yeah, they like have, like yeah, not real cloned, <laughs> cloned yeah. chicken meat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of sad, but it's it's that's yeah. It's like Canada has slightly different rules than the states. So like our pop tarts are slightly different, our craft Ooh. dinner is slightly different, that kind of thing. Yeah, but the UK has like even stricter rules, so they're like real food. But like the America's KFC is way better than Canada KFC because that's because they get the good I know. chemicals. <laughs> I know because like you guys are allowed like the good <laughs> grease, they cook everything in lard. Like, yeah, yeah. Love, we don't care. We like, have it in oil. Yeah. Like the states of oils, stuff. like yeah. chumps. <laughs> Jealous of fast foods and stuff, but not <laughs> of your. To be fair, stuff. our health care give us a couple years. Give us a couple <laughs> years and we'll be caught up, okay? And then we'll be worried about, you know, emergency surgeries. We're close. We still have to, we have to pay for blood tests now, certain blood tests yes. and stuff. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Slowly but surely. More, a little bit more American every year. It's, you know, a, a border is a, a made up thing. There's no reason that we all, we shouldn't suffer equally. Right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I can throw rocks into maine like that's how close i am to the states like i can throw mm -hmm. them i should be able to just walk right over well then meet me at uh me, me, me at tim hortons and and we'll do a live okay. uh, stream of how how much we hate it <laughs> yeah oh i'll God, bring food I'll bring canadian coffee yeah i'll bring canadian coffee we'll compare like i'll just like bring across the border fresh and then be like hey this is how it's supposed to taste there we go <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I just want to talk about your Horns? book. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's talk about food more. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to say Tim Horn's coffee is still gross. <laughs> like even in Canada, it's better because it's not as watered down. I think that's the issue. No, it's different. No, so the America has a stronger blend. So Canada, like, we're still kind of, like, British. We like our tea, but we want it to be coffee. So it's, like, a breakfast blend. Like, it's very – it's not as aggressive. Uh, uh, so yeah, it's a, yeah, so it's – you can taste it with, like, the cream and sugar. So it's good. It's, it's, I, like, work it's like a for, <laughs> uh, I work for a fairly well-known corporate coffee chain. I uh, won't say the name, but Fair. let's just say that their, their logo might be a, a mermaid siren type of character. <laughs> <laughs> um, and if there's one good thing I can say about that company that I work for is they make some damn good coffee. It's like super strong. It you know, I don't want to taste any water. In my coffee. <laughs> yeah, with no, Dunkin' like, Donuts and Tim Hortons, um, it's like I'm drinking water with a hint of coffee. I mean, yeah, that's the problem with American water. beer. It's all water. No offense, guys. You guys. Of water down. Oh, water. I've never had the the shits worse than after a night of drinking Bud Light. <laughs> oh I, I don't my know God. what it is. Like I think 
Okay, so I used to clean hotels, and one one time there was a guy like he left, and he so much Bud Light, like there's so many cases of Bud Light, but there was diarrhea all oh, over yeah. the room, <laughs> like that, like definitely. I was like, oh my gosh, like I quit. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you that was my first day and last day cleaning that hotel like this this bud light case is all lined up i was like oh that's really sweet of him like he like clean free yeah because he left the diarrhea and, and that then was the least he could go in <laughs> like he was he cleaned up with the bed sheets you know <laughs> like it's no mm -mm. <laughs> bud okay. light no thank you molson <laughs> canadian Owned by an American company. Like, I, every Canadian company is owned by, like, there's so many owned by, they're American. They're American. So, they're all jokes. If you drink Molson Canadian, it's also a watered-down beer. Hence why I drink most of my beer. Okay, I, I, I'm a PBR girl. I, I won't lie. But when I have money, I drink from local breweries. <laughs> Because that's where the good stuff is. Because everything else is watered down, American owned. PBR is is. I just think I don't know. Maybe if it's just me, like there's different types of drunk that I would get. Where if I drank different things, yeah. And if it was PBR, I would always wake up in a strange place, uh, not really remembering how I got there. There was one incident where I woke up as one often does with a terrible hangover, feeling a little ugh, in my stomach. I was in my bed at home. I don't know how I got there, but I blame PBR for this. As one often does waking up after a night of drinking, I felt a little gas. So I'm in bed, you know, I lift one cheek to let it out and ow, it hurt. It felt like it ripped my asshole apart. Oh no. And so I, I'm like, what, what was it? What just came out of me? So I got up from the bed and I looked down and there was a nickel there. <laughs> so somehow a nickel, an American nickel, that's a five cent piece. We, uh, we have a Canadian nickels, don't worry. Yeah, okay. Ours have beavers. Oh. Um, <laughs> for animal. Somehow, oh, oh I, I, thanks for clarifying yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, somehow a nickel got up my ass and I blame PBR. That's fair. Okay, I drink PBR strong. Like, when I drink beer, it's PBR strong. So it's 5.9%. And I always wake up in a strange place. It's always my bed. But <laughs> I'm always like, huh. Hmm. I feel like I did something embarrassing. I don't know what. I'm in my house. I didn't go nowhere. But something, somewhere, I was embarrassed. And usually my husband comes in and he was like, Oh, you left the fridge open after eating an entire tub of Greek yogurt, you know? And I'm like, oh, well, there we go. That was the embarrassing thing. You know, I'm like, there's something. I did something. <laughs> I, I'm just imagining Greek, a tub of Greek yogurt and like six or seven PBRs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're imagining right. <laughs> Oh no. And then like the nickels, like just add those too. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm pulling no. them out. Shit's expensive these days. I can't fucking waste those five cents. Yeah, like <laughs> inflation. <laughs> no, like you're keeping them. Yeah, no, it's that's like insane. Um, I don't uh get that intoxicated. So I have no no stories like that, which is fine, I guess. Like <laughs> Oh, I can't do tequila for that reason, although sometimes I still do tequila. So, you know, it's, I just know, I like <laughs> warn everyone. I'm like, <laughs> I, I did uh, tequila shots on my 22nd birthday. And to this day, if I even smell it, the gag reflex kicks in. I'll, I'll oh, remember. Fireball. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like I can remember being in the car, be, I wasn't driving being in the back seat with my head out the window and watching my puke hit the cars behind oh, us no. <laughs> on the highway. <laughs> no, and no. That, that was tequila. I just can't drink tequila. Like we were like doing like a friend's night and the others were like doing like shots of tequila. I'm doing shots of like cooler. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't do tequila. I'll just do my like hard lemonade. Like that's it. <laughs> I love that you guys know your limits. Like, I'm so jealous. I'm hoping by 35, 
I'll oh. get there. I'll be like, ah, oh, boundaries. You're just um, a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, do we have any last minute questions before we keep talking about our benders? Yeah, <laughs> no, like, where can everyone find you? Like, we have it like on scrolling, but do you have like other places people can find all your work? And I've <laughs> never had a website, uh, probably never will. I mean, you can look me up. I mean, I see my Instagram floating across the screen. Uh, you can look me up, Jeff O'Grimacy, on, on Facebook. That's the only social media I use. Um, so I, I guess just find me there. Just find you on Facebook. I will. We'll, we'll also have links to um, his Amazon as well as the Instagram and all that stuff in the description below. Um, yeah. So thank you so much, Jeff, for coming on. I'm really excited. Thank you. Thank you, you, are, thank you. you are for Melinda. Like everyone knows that like, I'm very much into found footage fest. Mm -hmm. I got to meet Nick and Joe, um, a couple months ago, which is awesome. They make us a, uh, oh, I pay them cause you know, support <laughs> yeah. small artists. Um, but they, they make us a Christmas video every year, two years mm -hmm. running. So I'm really excited for what they bring out for the third year. We got, Dicks last year. So nice. Really excited. Yeah. <laughs> Dicks and chickens. Like <laughs> I was like, thank you. That's pretty much sums us up. Um, so uh I love your shirt. I just want to yes. acknowledge. <laughs> I had you in mind uh when I right before I was like, Oh, I should wear a found footage shirt tonight. So. Yeah, you should. I have <laughs> I have the uh, sofa bed conspiracy shirt. I also have that. Uh, my mind oh. is just a piece of shit. The Winnebago, <laughs> the Winnebago Man mug. Winnebago Man. I love Found Footage Fest. 100%. Watch them every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Oh, absolutely. We never miss it. I miss it sometimes, but I catch up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Patreon sub. <laughs> they can, I think they'll forgive me. But yeah. uh, so it's so nice to have a fellow Melinda on. So again, thank you so much for coming on. Again, all of his uh, links will be in the description below. And um, this is season two finale um, of Books and Booze. So hopefully, season three will actually have a schedule. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I have no, no, promises. no promises. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Okay, both for August. We'll just shoot them all out and get them like on a release schedule. schedule. We'll do it. Yeah. We'll do it. Um, we'll so thank up. you so much. <laughs> yeah, we'll be crud. We'll be professionals. <laughs> We drop so, the ball. It's okay. It, it's fine. We still release every Friday for our regular episodes. Um, don't forget to check out our Patreon. And uh, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Um, bye. Bye. bye.